Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to your fourth stimulus package and news update. We have a lot of news to get into in today's video, but first, if you would like to receive two free stocks from Webull valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. Okay, so in the lead story for today, inflation was up by 6.2% in October from one year ago, which is the highest amount in 31 years. In October alone, inflation was up 0.9%, which is higher than the 0.4% rise in September. This means, no, inflation is not slowing down. Instead, it's only getting worse. This time around, inflation is a lot more than just soaring prices in used cars. This time, leading the pack is fuel, oil, and gas at 59 and 50%. Then we have utility at 28%, used cars at 26%, hotels at 26%, Steaks at 24%, bacon at 20%, pork chops at 16%, washing machines at 15%, furniture and eggs at 12%, fish at 11%, TVs at 10%, new cars at 10%, chicken at 9%, milk at 6%, coffee at 6%, flour at 5%, and rent up 3.1%. And if you notice higher grocery bills, you're definitely not crazy either. This is especially true if you eat foods higher in proteins as steaks are up 24% from last year. Additionally, steak is up 24%, bacon up 20%, pork chops at 16%, and you get it, this is pretty much from the same list as I just mentioned prior. Oh, and with winter fast approaching, if Americans needed any more bad news, fuel oil is up 59%, propane and firewood are up 35%, and utility gas up 28%. This, my friends, is real crazy stuff. According to the US Labor and Bureau of Statistics, after adjusting for today's new inflation numbers, average hourly wages fell 1.2% from October 2020 to October 2021. The change in real average hourly earnings combined with a decrease of 0.3% in average work week resulted in a 1.6% decrease in real average weekly earnings. So even though many Americans are seeing a rise in overall pay, with many businesses paying out more due to a large amount of job openings, after inflation, Americans are actually taking home less money. Inflation, after all, is the silent killer of our money. For months now, the Biden administration has been telling us that inflation is simply transitory, or in other words, not long term. Well, here we are at the end of the year, and things certainly aren't getting any better. Taking a real good note of this is Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, who said in a tweet, by all accounts, the threat posed by record inflation to the American people is not transitory and is instead getting worse. From the grocery store to the gas pump, Americans know the inflation tax is real and DC can no longer ignore the economic pain Americans feel every day. In a press conference earlier this month, Manchin said he would not support the Build Back Better plan if he felt it could impact inflation, which in turn would hurt many American families. Throughout the last three months, I've been straightforward about my con concerns that I will not support a reconciliation package that expands social programs and irresponsibly adds to our $29 trillion in national debt that no one seems to really care about or even talk about. Nor will I support a package that risks hurting American families suffering from historic inflation. Simply put, I will not support a bill that is this consequential without thoroughly understanding the impact that it'll have on our national debt, our economy, and most importantly, all of our American people. Manchin said he will not support a bill that risks hurting American families from this record inflation. With this new report showing inflation at 30 year highs and no signs of it ever slowing down, Will this news be the dagger in the Build Back Better bill? Even before the report, there was never a guarantee of Manchin voting in approval of the package, but now Manchin's feet may be getting even colder. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy tweeted, we are one week closer to the holidays and inflation is rising at a pace we haven't seen in more than 30 years. But Democrats are focused on spending trillions that will only make this crisis worse. The American people can't afford the consequences of the Democrats' failed agenda. Last week, the majority leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, argued that spending an additional $2 trillion in the Build Back Better package would actually improve the inflation crisis. Watch. All the while, Build Back Better will be fully paid for and will ultimately relieve our nation's inflationary pressures. Don't take my word for it. Many leading economists have made this clear, had made clear that this legislation would improve, not worsen inflation in this country. So there are a lot of good things in this framework. 
and Democrats are moving forward to get a final agreement and this bill over the finish line. Nobody said that transformative legislation of this scale would be easy, quick, or simple. But we remain committed to meeting our ultimate goal of helping working and middle class families achieve the American dream in the 21st century. We want to help those in the middle class stay there. They're worried about their future and the future of their children. We want to help those struggling to get to the middle class get there more easily by building ladders that they can climb. It's so important we get this done. This is the best opportunity we've had in a long time to make that a reality, so we will continue marching ahead. So the democratic solution to this inflation problem, other than Joe Manchin's, of course, is to simply just throw more money at it. Republicans, on the other hand, in large part at least, are ready to slam on the brakes. Of course, it's difficult for Mitch McConnell, the 18 Republicans in the Senate, and 13 Republicans in the House to argue against more spending when they already helped Democrats pass the $1 trillion infrastructure package. Because of the 13 Republicans in the House breaking from their party and helping Democrats pass that bill, they have recently come under attack from their own party. Marjorie Taylor Greene, for example, called the 13 Republicans traitors helping to pass Joe Biden's communist takeover of America. She also listed the phone numbers of the Republicans in her post. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, a fan of the infrastructure package, says it should help stop our highways from being racist. As to where we target those, those dollars, you know, I, I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, that that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality. And I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away uh, uh, Putting to work. Since the infrastructure bill is now passed, progressive Democrats now have a lot less leverage in getting the moderates to pass the Build Back Better plan. Because of this, Mitch McConnell is now increasing the pressure on Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, saying they can now just drop the whole thing. After Democrats got beat up pretty badly in the normally pretty blue states of Virginia and New Jersey, McConnell argues they should take that as a sign to just kill the entire package. McConnell also stated the two Senate Democrats who are resisting Joe Manchin from West Virginia and Kirsten Sinema from Arizona will see how strong they are. They could kill the whole thing, either one of them. Whether or not they decide to kill the whole thing is still entirely up in the air. More than likely, rather than killing the entire package, we'll see them continuing to drive the overall price tag down. Of course, this is something they've already been doing over the past few months, but now with this new inflation report, they'll have even more reason to do so. Oh, and let us not forget, in just three weeks, Democrats will have to pass another reconciliation package in order to extend government funding and raise the debt ceiling. Last month, Mitch McConnell helped Democrats temporarily extend government funding until December 3rd, but he made clear this time around, he won't do the same thing. So with congressional lawmakers set to return from recess next week, we should have a very eventful month ahead. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple of free stocks from Webull, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link in the description box below. To receive the first stock, you will need to fully open an account. Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. And even if you aren't all that interested in investing or continuing to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks that you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back to your bank account. So free stocks or free money is completely up to you. So once again, I hope everyone has a great and safe rest of their day. If you did enjoy the content in today's video and you found it helpful in whatever way, I would greatly appreciate if you would give this video a like, a big thumbs up. That does help out with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, as always, I'll see you in the next video.